Ivy from DOH, and today I'm going to show you how to edit a model in Mesh Mixer. So I'm using Mesh Mixer, which is this free software you can get online, download it from their website, and so that's what we're going to be using to prepare our models to be printed. So I've imported my STL file into Mesh Mixer, and the first thing you'll notice is that there's this grid and this printer bed. I typically don't like to edit with them on, so I'm going to turn them off by going into View and I'm going to deselect show grid and I'm going to deselect show printer bed. So now we've got this free floating STL model. Now what I'm going to do is go into analysis and press inspector. This is going to show us some holes that were in the model from the scan. So all I'm going to do is click on the pink bubbles and you'll notice there's a pink one and there's red ones. So I'm only pressing on the pink and not the red because the red indicates the boundary of the model. And I just don't want to click on that because it will fill in this entire model and I don't want that just yet. So I'm um, going to click done once that's all done. And now what I can do is trim up the model, make it nice and clean. So I'm going to press select and I'll show you two ways to do this. The first method is the lasso method. So I'm going in and starting on the gray area, not on the model, starting on the gray area, I'm just going to click using my mouse and dragging it throughout the model where I want to trim it and make sure to connect the circle so that it only selects where you want to trim. And then on my keyboard, I'm just going to press delete. So that's the first method, which is the lasso method. The second method is the kind of click and drag method where you start on the outside of the grid again or on the gray area and just click and drag click and drag and release it afterwards. So click, release, drag, click, release, drag, and just keep going around. This is a little bit of a more controlled method. And you can make one full round, click and drag, and then connect it until you get just what you want and press delete. So I'll show you what happens if you do click directly on the model instead of starting on the gray. You'll just accidentally highlight um, a little bit of more messy approach and you might highlight the teeth and we don't want that so stick with the last or the click and drag so you get nice clean models and if you click, uh, click on something you don't want to click on just press clear selection or press control Z. So now I'm going to clean up the top of this area right here going back into select And what we're doing here is we're trimming these edges and making it nice and clean so that when we extrude the base, it'll be a smooth base. Okay, so I've got my edges all cleaned. So I'm going to check for holes one more time using analysis and inspector. You can see we don't have any other holes except for just this one boundary. Don't click on it, just press done. So now we can extrude the model. And what I'm going to do is on my keyboard, press control A to highlight the entire model, I'm going into edit and extrude, or you can press D on your keyboard. You'll see the model will turn a little bit orange and black stripes. So now what we're going to do is go to offset and I'm going to drag this to the maximum, just so you can see the entire base we're going to extrude, really nice base. I'm not going to mess with any of the other settings like harden, density, direction, or end type. So I'm just gonna press accept. So now what we're going to do is create a flat base. So I'm going into edit and plane cut. You'll see this plane will show up and you can do one of two things. You can use these widgets to kind of rotate the plane to how you like it. If you want a quicker little method, you can use your mouse to click and drag to where you like it. And then you can start adjusting your plane based on that position. And just use these widgets to move it up and down and to rotate it side to side. And you can create as thick or as thin of a base as you like. And just make sure to rotate it in all directions to make sure you're getting the nice base that you want.
All right, that looks good to me. Sometimes if I'm using a slicer like Rayware, I'll create a little bit of a thicker base just so I can go back in with plain cut once it's in Rayware. So I just have a little bit of wiggle room to play with the thickness. But in any case, this is looking good to me. So I'm just going to press accept. I'm not going to mess with the cut type or the fill type. It's just going to be cut, discard half, and remesh to fill. So I'm just going to press accept. So we got this really good looking model here. And the last thing I'm going to do is check for holes. Once again, looks good, just one boundary. And now we're going to make it a solid model. So we're going to go into edit, make solid, it should say filling hole zero one. You only want one hole to fill. And if you've been doing your analysis and expector properly, you should only have one hole to fill. And this could take a little. This could take a little time. All right, so now that we've got our solid model, I am just going to bring back a little bit of the definition in the solid accuracy and in mesh density. And going to update that. All right, and that looks great. So this is how you edit a model. And before you export it, just make sure to accept. And you're done.